Sir, will you start out by stating your name and spelling your last name for the record? My name is Nathan Asbury. Last name is A-S-B-U-R-Y. And how are you employed? Cincinnati Police Department. And were you so employed on July 19th, 2015? Yes, sir, I was. What was your assignment at that time? I was assigned to District 3. Were you working on that day? I was working on off-duty detail that day. And where was that? In uh, District 4. And what was the uh, time of your detail? It was in the afternoon. I don't recall the time, sir. At some point, uh, did you respond to the to Rice Street in District 4? Yes, sir, I did. And what was the reason for your responding? It was a report of a shooting. And what did you do? You were off duty for doing a private detail? Yes, sir. Why did you respond? I was nearby. Okay. Um, when you responded, what did you find? When I responded, um, at the corner of Loth and Rice, there was a, a UC police car that was blocking the intersection. So I parked and walked onto Rice Street, and as I was walking southbound past the, the UC police car, I saw three UC officers standing around the car that it looked like it had crashed at the intersection of Rice and Valencia. Yeah, and you were in uniform and driving a marked Cincinnati police cruiser that day, correct? Yes, sir. What happened when you arrived at Rice and Valencia? Um, I walked up and checked on the the driver of the vehicle that was crashed, and then I was observed one of the officers kind of uh, looking at himself and had pulled his pant leg up and was looking at his, his left knee and was looking at his arm, and I asked him if he was injured. And which officer was that? Officer Tenzing. Do you see Officer Tenzing in the courtroom today? Sitting at the defense table. Thank you, sir. Um, go ahead. I asked him if he was okay. Um, he said, and I don't remember what he said verbatim, something to the effect of um, that he was okay, but he had been drugged. And that's when I realized that this shooting was actually an officer-involved shooting. And it was first dispatched. Either it wasn't dispatched on Channel 4, or I didn't hear it come out as an officer-involved shooting. Okay, so what did you do at that point? Immediately, I separated him from the other officers that were there. Why? Um, it's our practice to separate witnesses so their stories uh, they don't talk about the story and um, kind of corrupt their own their own version of it do you know how long it was after the actual shooting that you arrived i do not okay um well when you you got there were there were there other officers on the scene besides the three you saw at racing lunch officer wells got there shortly before i did he's the brother cincinnati officer correct yes sir Shortly after or before? I'm sorry, shortly before. He got there shortly before I did. Were there other UC officers on the scene? There were a total of three when I got there. And did you determine who those three were? I never did get their names. Okay. Um, and then the officer were, so you were the second Cincinnati officer on the scene? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what did you do after you determined it was an officer involved shooting? Uh, Sergeant Carter arrived right after I did, and he put out over the radio that was, in fact, an officer-involved shooting. Uh, we separated the witnesses, and then eventually transported the witnesses. Well, I took Officer Tenzing to the hospital, and then the other officers, uh, I believe, went down to the, CI, the Cincinnati CIS office. And is it correct that Sergeant Carter kind of took over management of the scene there at first? Yes, sir. And he assigned you to Ray Tenzing? Correct. And you took Ray Tenzing from Rice and Valencia to University Hospital? Yes, sir. In your cruiser? Yes. Did you have any conversation on the way to the hospital? Yes. About what? Um, I just gave him a brief overview of what, what to expect. Uh, that, that some of the um, homicide detectives would be down to talk to him, that it was going to be a long day, and that he would probably be one of the last ones there. And you did not discuss what happened there on Rice and Valencia? No, I specifically asked him not to speak about that incident. And that and his body camera was running and operating when, when you were conversing with him? Yes. And then when you arrived at University Hospital, is it correct that the camera was turned off? Yes, sir. And you told him to turn it off, correct? Or you told him that would be a good place to turn it off? Yes, sir. Did you accompany him into the University Hospital? Yes, sir, I did. Where did you go in the hospital? We went to the emergency room. What, if anything, transpired there? Uh, 
we, they put us into a uh, room, and uh, medical staff came in, treated him. At one point, the detectives from homicide and criminalists came down uh, and took his, his uniform and took pictures of him. How long were you with Ray Tennyson, Kennedy? It was a few hours. I don't know exactly what time I left. And during your course of being with him, either out at Rice and Valencia or in the emergency room at University Hospital, did you observe any injuries on or about his person? Yes, sir, I did. What did you see? He had an, ab a, an abrasion on his left knee and some redness and swelling on his left forearm that I saw. Okay. And did you observe anything about his uniform? On the scene, there was, on the back of his pants and the back of his shirt, there was white marks that went like lengthwise on the back. Did you determine what those were from? It looked like marks from the road. Okay. Um, and were you able to observe Ray's demeanor during the period you were with him? Yes, sir. What was his demeanor? Um, calm. Did he appear to be happy or giddy or anything like that? No, sir. Did you hear any conversations that he engaged in with medical staff at the University Hospital? Yes, sir. Did you hear him ask what the condition of Sam DeBose was? Yes. What was the response? He, the nurse informed him that he was deceased. And what was Ray Tenzing's response to that? He uh, put his head down in his hands and sat there for a few minutes. When he lifted his head back up, it looked like he had been crying. Thank you. I have nothing further. Um, the state, uh, Mr. Tinker. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned that the state He was distraught because he knew that he may face serious charges. You don't know the reason that he his reaction was the way it was. Are you speaking about, uh, at the hospital? About, yes. No, sir. Okay. And you and I have known each other a long time, fair to say. Yes, sir. And you almost always testify for the state. Correct. Okay. And once you knew it was an officer in false shooting, would it be fair to say that you and everyone at the scene knew that other investigators would kind of take control of the situation and really wasn't your role to speak to him about what had occurred that evening on um, Price Street. My role at that point was to make sure that he didn't speak to anybody except for those investigators. And I think you had said that you had had a conversation with him about you're going to be interviewed by homicide, they're going to probably, you're probably going to be the last to be talked to. Were you aware at that time, Sergeant, that um, you see had a policy that, or somehow their union or their FOP, that in UC officer involved shootings, they get a couple days before they get interviewed? I did not know that. Okay, so you would thought that he was just going to get interviewed later on that evening after maybe some of the witnesses at the scene had been interviewed? Yes, sir. And do you know if that was on the body, body worn camera sergeant or not? If the... The conversation that you had with him about being last, because I think that when we showed the jury the body worn camera, it looks like um, Ray Tensing shut it off as he was about to walk into the hospital or when he parked at the hospital? I don't remember if that was on the way to the hospital or once we got to the hospital. I do not recall. Okay. And you also noted, Sergeant, that um, you saw some injuries, injuries on Mr. Tensing. Yes, sir. And they did not appear to be severe at all, did they? I would not classify them as severe. In fact, when we watched the body-worn camera, you drove at normal speed up to University Hospital, didn't you? Yes, sir. You stopped at all the stoplights, went the speed limit. Yes. There was no urgency for you to get him to the hospital, fair to say? Correct. Now, I know now that you're um, undercover, or you're, in a, you're not in a uniform, is that fair to say? Yes, sir. And when, how long have you been a Cincinnati police officer? 13 years. When you started out, were you in uniform? I was. Can you maybe take us through your career a little bit? Sure. Uh, once I graduated the academy in 2004, I was assigned to District 4 patrol. I did about 18 months in uniform, and I was uh, selected to go to the District 4 violent crime squad. 
um, which is a plain clothes assignment. We do a lot of um, work with drugs, robberies, guns, shootings. Uh, I spent about six or seven years in that assignment. Then I went to the District 4 Investigative Unit, like the suit and tie detective. I did that for a couple years, went back to the District 4 Violent Crime Squad for about a year, and then I was promoted to Sergeant. And when you went to Sergeant, was, um, did you were in uniform when you were a Sergeant as well? Yes, sir, for uh, about nine months in District 3. And did you go through training, Sergeant Esbury? Yes, sir. Um, OPADA-based training or OPADA-certified training? Yes. And, and in your training, is there a rule that you should, um, well, why don't you tell the jury what the rule is as far as reaching into cars? Um, in the academy, we were given the example of Officer Kevin Crown, who was killed because he reached into a car and tried to, I think, get the keys out of the ignition. Sure. And he was drugged to his death. We were always told not to reach into a car when the suspect is attempting to drive away. Was that pretty much drummed into your head, don't reach into a car? Yes. Very clear in your training that if there's a car and you're an officer and you're in uniform, rule number one, do not reach into that car. Fair to say? Don't reach into the car in an attempt to stop somebody from fleeing, yes. Sir. And have you ever reached into a car before, Sergeant? Yes. Um, could you describe the circumstances that you have? Sure. Uh, the circumstances when I have reached into a car that was occupied by a driver was either a suspected DUI where they were unconscious or someone who had over, overdosed on heroin, where we go into the car and put it in park. A lot of times it's in drive. Put it in park and take the keys out. And in those situations, Sergeant, would the driver be either dead or unconscious? Yes. And when you do that, do you have a, do you reach it through the driver's side or the passenger side? I always go through the passenger side. Could you explain to the jury why you would go through the passenger side, Sergeant? Uh, it allows a little more room um, in case on the off chance they wake up, I'm in a better position to be able to either back out or take control of the keys. And why would you be in a better position to take control of the keys from that side? It's just more open from that angle, from the passenger side, as opposed to reaching across them around the steering wheel to try to get to the keys. Okay. And have you ever been in a situation where you're at the driver's side and, um, and the driver started the car and attempted to drive away? Yes. And tell us about that. Um, it was a number of years ago, probably 2005, there was a shooting that came out where a uh, victim was dropped off, actually literally thrown out of the car in front of the UC ER. And the car that dropped him off fled, left him the person laying there. We observed the car eastbound on McMillan, well, my partner and I observed the car eastbound on McMillan Street at uh, Hemlock. Initiated a traffic stop, the car pulled over. I walked up to the car. Uh, the guy, would, the driver would roll the window down. I requested several times. He started to roll the window down. And he, he was repeating, I, I didn't do anything wrong. And I asked him to step out of the car, and put the car in drive and drove away. Was the window down at that point? Partially. Okay. And did you reach into the car to try to remove the keys, Sergeant Asbury? No, sir. And why didn't you do that? I, I don't think I would have been able to get to the keys before we drove away. Were you able to remember? Your training at that point? Yes. And when the window was partially down and he started to drive away, what did you do? I ran back to the police car. And then what? Um, we started a pursuit and lost him a few blocks away. A vehicle pursuit? Yes, sir. <clears throat> you were not injured? No, sir. The driver was not injured? Not that I know of, but that way. And the situation was over? Yes. That's all I have, Judge. Mr. Matthews, anything not to uh, redirect? Sergeant Asbury, with reference to the story you just told, would you have reached into that car and sneaked it away if you could have, do you think? Can you repeat the question, sir? 
with reference to the story you just told, would you have reached into that car instinctively if you could have? Based on all the training that I received, I don't think I would. Okay. Um, do, have you ever reacted instinctively to anything? Sure. Absolutely. And how does that work? How does it work? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's just, uh, a reaction. It's almost uh, happens before you even think about it. Thank you. Nothing else, Would it be fair to say, Sergeant, that when you react instinctively, you react instinctively, but knowing that you're training is always a guideline or a background to your instincts. I always hope that, yes sir. Thank you. You always hope that, but that doesn't always occur, correct? I, I didn't answer you, I mean, the judge. Uh, oh, I apologize, I thought you should. Judge, I would object to the question. I always hope that it, that it does serve, but there's been some times where it, it hasn't. Thank you. Um, anything further? No, Judge. Thank you. Okay. Um, Sergeant, you may step down. Thank you for helping us. Thank you, Judge.